Hello, everybody. Welcome back uh, with our chapter two. Um, again, I'm going to just, uh, again, this is I'm not trying to turn this into a full lecture uh, that I would do in class uh, because you have your study materials, your PowerPoints. And, uh, but I do like touching base uh, with uh, certain ideas out of each chapter. Each chapter give you uh, some more examples, um, and particularly when I can with uh, research I've I've done, projects I've been involved in, uh, as well as uh, projects that I'm uh, getting ready to work on. So I'll try to bring in some of these just to give you some highlights in, in uh, these different chapters we'll be covering and point out a few things. I'm not going to cover the whole chapter. Uh, and first of all, you'd fall asleep probably before I got finished. Uh, way too much. Keep your interest. Uh, they say it's very difficult, to, you know, doing uh, keeping people's uh, attentions, uh, listening to someone speak, and we professors are quite aware of that fact as we watch students nodding off in class or their eyes closing while you're while you're talking. And uh, so I try to be brisk with it and, uh, and uh, just try to give give you a couple of interesting. Hey, to start out with this, uh, first of all, I might be wondering what's all this behind my back here uh, uh, because of uh, family, uh, you know, getting together as people in the house. Uh, I had to run to come to what's come, what these guys call you. Your man cave. I don't call it that, but that's a popular term. And uh, so, yeah, all, all all of my life, I've been a uh, a big collector of uh, World War II uh, helmets. Yeah, it's kind of an odd uh, collecting, but it's not a, it's not uh, it's not something that's uh, minimal. I mean, there's a lot of people. I've I've been several organizations worldwide that uh, that uh, do collect these, and uh, so. Thought well, since I, you see all this back here, I thought I'd point out just a few of these. Uh, what I what I do is I, uh, and this kind of goes along with symbolic interactionism, is I try to make meanings out of, uh, you know, if you found one of these in a trash can, you didn't have any background knowledge about what they were, you wouldn't have a lot of information to know where was, you know, who used it, what was it used for, where, you know, nine times. If you go on eBay and buy, you can buy them on eBay, but most of the time you don't know where they where they came from, uh, who was a veteran. So what I try to do is find uh, choice pieces that I recognize from years of study, and uh, a lot of times I do buy them off of eBay. And uh, then what I do is I go to work trying to interpret. Uh, first of all, I look for the if the helmet has a name or a, a name. The best scenario is having their name and their serial number. Uh, because each soldier got a serial number during the war, and uh, if, you, if that serial number is unique to that particular person, so what I can do with that information is I can send it off to the uh, National Archives in uh, St. Louis. There's folks there that have looked that person up for me, and then what I do is I uh, uh, they compile their file, their war, their war files for me, and they send it to me, and uh, so. Now this first element here, I'll point up this way. This one up here on the, this is a, a modern, uh, actually it's a paratrooper helmet. I, I had a student years ago that uh, he was in the uh, Afghan war twice. He, he did two two tours of uh, Afghanistan, and uh, he was in the 82nd Airborne, and he was in military police. And he, one of these guys, I got a picture of him here. Can't really see it clearly, but. He, He's sitting in the back of a truck with that helmet on, and he's got a he's got his police dog with him that he carried with him in the field, and uh, uh, so uh, this one uh, this one I didn't have to work on. This was given to me by a former former student. Uh, this one this one you see a picture of two guys standing here. Uh, one of those guys is Eisenhower, so General Ike Eisenhower. Uh, the for, the uh, former president of the United States, and he's talking with his first cousin uh, from Kansas. They were raised in the same small town, 
in Kansas, in Abilene, Texas, uh, Kansas. And uh, he met him while he while the general was touring uh, July 4th. He was in Normandy touring after the invasion and touring and, and uh, meeting with uh, different divisions. And uh, they brought his first cousin forward that day to actually it's also on uh, YouTube. There's a video of these two meeting. Uh, and uh, but anyway, uh, through through collectors uh, and for us, for example, here's the helmet. He was in the the uh, second. Uh, he was in the second infantry division. It's got a, got a symbol on the top there, the helmet. And then that white uh, notebook is full of his files that I got through the. So I've been able to prove where it came from. Uh, I have the proof of when it where it was sold uh, at the family auction. And then just all of his service. And uh, so this one is a very uh, coveted uh, helmet. I've had a lot of collectors all over the world offering to buy this from me, but I'm not willing to sell it. I'm, I plan to give these to my older son when I when I pass on. So, uh, but this is a very rare one. Uh, this one, the next one here is a. You see the nice young man there. Uh, so I did research on this one that I found with his name, and I've been able to talk with his family members, his daughter. Anyway, he was a medic in, in the Battle of Guadalcanal in the Pacific and uh, got his full got his full uh, file. And then this one here, this one is, guess what? This guy here, he's a movie actor. This helmet was used in the movie, uh, some of you may have heard, it's about 10 years old now. The name of the movie was The Pacific. And uh, this is this guy's helmet that was used in that movie. And I got a few more. This one, this one here, I just finished this with this one. This one right here is an uh, actual helmet from the D-Day landings, uh, June 6, 1944, in the invasion of Europe, and the landings in Normandy. That, that's where this helmet comes from. And uh, you'll see a magazine article. I've actually written several articles for a magazine in, in Paris, France. And I wrote an article on this particular helmet and the uh, veteran. That's the magazine. So that's that's a, a part of some of my uh, identity and things that uh, I do. Uh, so there it is. Um, so today I just want to touch a little base with uh, what, what I, I want to stress a little bit is the uh, uh, touch base with symbolic interactionism. But I really want to just spend a little time with the uh, social structure and personality theory to give you just a little more background on, on that theory. Uh, you know, the symbolic interactionist uh, theory is is one that was born, it's an American theory. It's an American sociology, the American sociological uh, contribution, if you will, to sociology. So it's a theory that came out of the United States, uh, particularly out of the University of Chicago, and uh, sort of has a bias towards American culture. Uh, the other from the last video talking about uh, uh, discussing uh, uh, the two macro theories, conflict theory, functionalism, uh, those two theories come out of uh, Europe and uh, they, they somewhat have a bias in them towards uh, a European perspective. And uh, they're very, you know, they're very much... Uh, the culture of class, for example, in England, where uh, the conflict theory was uh, arose uh, in the beginning with Karl Marx's work, uh, really carries that bias of looking at social class. And uh, if you know anything about the English uh, people in England, uh, very class conscious uh, society, much more so than ours are. But uh, the symbolic internationalist perspective is you can see the bias as an it's an American theory because it sees individuals as free to choose, as, as a sort of a free flowing, uh, in, in flux kind of people on the move. Uh, things things are in flux. Uh, you know, people or individuals are coming and going. So it's that notion of sort of open individualism that you find with that. But it's it's just a bias in the theory itself. It's no problem with that. Uh, but um, 
One of the main things about symbolic interactionism in, in regards to the difference with the uh, two macro theories we talked about is that uh, we, we think of it as a, as a micro theory uh, that that is subjective in nature. So the other two theories uh, look at these objective, that is, when we say objective, that they actually exist out there even though we can't see them. So social classes, for example, or the larger social institutions, they're objectified as these actual existing things, right, that can be studied as objects. Uh, with the stimulic inter interaction, this pr perspective, the, there's a flip on, on flip of the uh, rose glasses, so to speak, to another color. So it's flipping, it's flipping reality. So instead of it being a top-down objective theory, it, it's a uh, from the ground up uh, subjective theory. So it seems to society not as an object, object out there waiting to be explored. This is very important to understanding uh, this symbolic interactionist perspective. It sees the world as a mental construct. It's within our psyches. It's in our minds. It's a mental construction. Uh, one way to kind of get at that is you know, we live in a uh, country of uh, uh, well over 300 uh, million people. Uh, 360 million, somewhere in there, maybe a little more. But uh, it's a lot of people, and certainly we don't know everybody, right? We don't know everybody in the United States. So here we are if in North Carolina. We don't know everybody in California or, or Oregon or Michigan or but we believe in our psyches, we believe that they're there, right? Even though we don't know them, we feel kindred spirit to, to, to other Americans. Especially when you meet Americans in other countries, there's a recognition right away. Oh, you're from the States, you know, we say that. Um, but it's imaginary. So when we think of our country, actually it's not an object that exists out there. Even the map itself does not exist in reality. It's a, you know, it's a social construction. Uh, so uh, in our minds, uh, American society is a social construction. It's an agreed upon means that we have about our membership in this uh, imaginary, what we call an imaginary community, an imagined community of, of people. And we say imagine because we don't, we don't know everybody, but we still feel kindred to each other in our minds. Uh, but that's a social construction, and it it carries a lot of weight, a lot of meaning. And again, the, the purpose of uh, symbolic interactionism is to um, is to get at how human beings uh, interpret things, how we give meanings to the world, and then based on those meanings that we give, we behave. So from this standpoint, behavior, human behavior is not so much being, I might be shaped by or affected by the larger structures of society. Uh, so, uh, you know, if we're in a classroom at a university, there are certain norms and, and behaviors that are expected, and we, we tend to conform our behavior to these larger structures, right? Um, but there's a free, for symbolic interactionism, there's a, there's a freedom there to give meanings, to negotiate meanings with others. Uh, so we negotiate society. We negotiate with our families, people we interact with, right? So people interpret, make meanings before they behave. And that can be something that's weighed out over time, or it can be knee-jerk, right? So if you're walking down the street and you see somebody running full-fledged with an angry look on their face and they're running right towards you right at you and they got their arms up in the air you might interpret that you've got to interpret what is what's going on you know so you you're in, inside yourself you're interpreting this person's getting ready to attack me right and so this could happen very quickly you think that person's getting ready to attack and so you may hit them first right you react knee jerk uh, and uh, that, but they may run by you because they're, they're running from a from a uh, somebody was trying to rob them down the street and they were just running away, right? 
uh, so uh, we we make meanings we make meanings out of what people are in other objects before we behave towards them so we have to make meanings before we and that's a whole different uh, way of looking at the world because uh, uh, that way behavior is not just uh, something that's coming from these larger structures it's also something within ourselves and that if we want from the symbolic interactionist perspective if we want to understand human behavior especially 99 percent of it you know where we're out in the public at work at school with our families with friends peer groups uh, sports teams religious uh, get-togethers whatever it might be uh, we're giving meanings to our interactions daily making judgments uh, about others in terms of how they how they speak how they dress how they uh, behave towards us we're always reading people right uh, so in that sense then the world human behavior is is almost 90 98 percent of it being social behavior uh, most of our behavior is being uh, determined by how we give meaning to it to our lives it's based in meaning so then that, that really sets up some, a different type of uh, research scenario if if i want to understand a street gang let's let's use that scenario and uh first of all the, you know as you read the chapter you'll see that there's uh, several types of uh, schools of uh, symbolic interactionism but the first one that the chicago school was the first uh, main one and it's the most popular one today there's also a school of symbolic interactionism that uh, that flourished in in, Ohio, in Iowa, the Iowa School of Interactionism, and it looked at social life as a little bit more stabilized than a little, little less in flux as the as the Chicago School did, and a lot of that may be due to to the acceptance of the ideas of the social structure personality uh, theorist uh, theories that daily life is structured and patterned enough uh, that we, we we can actually study this at, in a statistical way we can make predictions about behaviors depending on the structures depending on the uh, the social statuses that people occupy and to some extent that's true uh, but not all behavior is there's still even within those social structures as we'll see and those uh, um, positions in society, social positions uh, in society that uh, people can still say no that's a big one in symbolic interaction is that human beings have the ability have the ability to say no and because of that it makes human beings we can't predict what human beings are going to do in any situation 100 percent and so uh, we we have to the interaction standpoint then that, uh, that people behave on and towards what things mean to them so getting back to the gang uh, the uh, studying a gang for example um, so in that setting then uh, you know from a symbolic inter interaction standpoint the gang within itself has its own little social world we can call it a subculture if we want it's, a, it's their own insider social world and uh, in order to understand what motivates gang members behavior then for the researchers sociologists the micro sociologists social psychologists using symbolic interactionism a lot of our a lot of our and i say our because I'm, I'm a part of the symbolic interactionist perspective uh, school uh, so we we um, we rely on on ethnographic types of field research in order to understand what things mean to people you got to get inside right you got to get involved with those people and try to get them to open up and so that and get them to act natural within their natural environment enough so that you can begin to describe the the meanings that that, that promotes their behavior within that that group uh, and so from that perspective the most important research uh, agenda is to find out what things mean 
to the people themselves in that, in that group setting. So if I wanted to study a fraternity on campus, I would, uh, you know, we can talk more about the different techniques here, uh, but I would, uh, I would contact the, the uh, heads of the uh, students that run the organization. I would try to tell them I'm interested in their way of life and their, you know, what it means to be a member of the fraternity. And I would get inside there and uh, begin to observe what we call participant observation and participate with them as much as possible, hang out, but also be observing and interviewing folks too as time goes by. And, uh, and, the, and the goal here is to produce a complex, rich data set, a study of the inside workings of fraternity, the inside workings of a street gang, uh, inside workings of a prostitution uh, a street, um, uh, pro street prostitutes a group on on the streets, uh, and all. And we see a lot of these kinds of studies. So one thing about symbolic interactionist studies is it, uh, it allows for us to study mirrored forms of uh, group settings. So one of one of the one of the things about being a symbolic interactionist is that you've got to be uh, you have you have have to like people. You have to be in, interested in what motivates people to do what they do. You have to have that, that ability to negotiate and interact with people, enjoy interacting, enjoy differences. Uh, you also have to uh, know how to be humble and to take on a student role in that kind of research because you, it makes sense if you uh, you go in if you're trying to get inside with a street gang, you're walking around with a three-piece suit on and, uh, you know, you're not going to come across as uh, they may fear that you may be working for the police, for example. So, uh, you know, you've got to be able to, to have good negotiation skills. Uh, you've got to be able to get along with people and to treat them with respect and not get too heady with them. You've got to play the student role. Teach me teach me what it is that, about your subculture. And uh, the thing with, with this this type of uh, way of looking at the world is that our society is made up of myriads and thousands and thousands of different world, social worlds, just depending on what group it is and how they give meaning to their activities. Uh, and it can be very, it can be uh, uh, research that's very, very uh, important research. You know, people's lives are at stake. Uh, it could also be a very um, sort of mild, uh, sort of uh, in entertainment types of uh, research, like I'm doing with uh, the songwriters uh, as, for, uh, as entertainers, you know. Uh, but you could do you could do a study of microculture. A microculture is usually a small, a very small group. So when we talk about a microculture to be studied, um, that would be like a, a coffee shop, for example. Or a uh, kids, um, uh, a, a kids baseball team, right? T ball team. What goes on in that microculture? You know, how 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 do they uh, give meaning to their to their game, and uh, how how do they interact with each other? This kind of thing. So the world, the the, the uh, sky is the limit in terms of what you can get involved in. So most of the time, researchers will, will get involved in those areas of research, research that they're interested in. And I've thought about doing it with uh, my collecting interest uh, because there, you know, there's, the, there's ability to meet these folks in certain situations at conventions and this kind of thing and uh, to get on the inside. And you come up, have to come up with your some of what insights you're going to focus on uh, and just sort of sum up here with the my own research. Uh, so my last uh, publication was uh, 2017, and uh, this is one of the flagship uh, publications in the symbolic interactionist uh, tradition. So the editor is uh, one of the best known symbol symbolic interactionists, uh, Norman Denzen, and uh, this particular Volume is a hard. It's a hardcover volume. I guess it looks for me. It looks like it's backwards. I think once we 
publish it, it'll be okay. You can see it. Um, but the name of the uh, is uh, Oppression and Resistance Structure Agency Transformation. This has to do with any social inequality. This book does, and it's made up of various articles. So my articles here, I, I took up a, a theme. This is called Public Sociology and Symbolic Interactionism, Participatory Research and Writing Culture with a Southern Native American Tribe. Now, participatory research is where the researcher is working along with the subjects they're studying. And the the, uh, the subjects are, it's better to use the term, uh, our clients, if you will, uh, or key consultants is another uh, more politically correct uh, name. Used to use the term informant, but informant sounds like something from the military. So they came up with a key consultant. Sounds a little, it's, it's padding the meaning, so to speak. Um, and uh, but my main my main argument here this comes from my dissertation research with a tribe in South Carolina, and so the public sociology is a new a movement that's been around a while, but it's basically applied sociology. It's attempting to do research to help people, not just to study them uh, for theory's sake, but actually do research like participatory research in order to help a group. Uh, to move ahead in life, to find avenues of uh, advancement in their lives, so to speak, to uh, solve social problems in the community. Uh, so in this case, symbolic internationalism hasn't been used a lot uh, in the area of uh, in the area of uh, public sociology. So I, I felt that my research could make a contribution. Uh, showing how symbolic interactionism can be can give a contribution to public sociology through focusing on meanings. And so in this case, uh, my whole study here, and it's a quite a lengthy article, it's an ethnographic study I did. It's also a book. If you go on to Amazon, you'll see my book, Native Americans in the Carolina Borderlands, is the name of the book. And uh that was published in 2000, but that's my full ethnographic study. But I, I derive my data from from my dissertation to talk about the uh, this contribution. So basically, it's a study that was uh, I was involved with with the tribe to help them with their their state recognition efforts, and um, so. Uh, Again, this is this is where symbolic interactionism comes comes in because their mission, what they were planning to do or trying to do, was to come up with a convincing historical cultural story about their people that would be convincing to the state folks who would make the decision of whether to give that tribe state recognition or not based on certain guidelines and certain uh, uh, certain rules and regulations. Uh, that uh, the state gives them and trying to fit that tribe into those fr that framework, right? So that uh, they would be convinced that, yes, this is a this is a tribe worthy of state recognition. And of course, there's a lot of politics involved, a lot of interpretation, false, uh, false guidelines to some extent, some fantasy. Uh, for example, the notion that Native American tribes uh, uh, that they, they were actually back during the aboriginal times before people were here, uh, that they thought of themselves as separate tribes. And that was, that's, that's a creation. That's a creation of the colonial, uh, uh, the colonial regimes in, in the United States. That was not a, a aboriginal uh, factor. That was not an aboriginal reality for, for your peoples. And, and they would call themselves the peoples. Uh, they, uh, the connection between them was based on family. So it was family ties that, that was more important. That's why today you have different tribes, even in the Carolinas, but they got family members that are members of other other tribal groups um, because throughout their ancient history, going back pre-colonial history, uh, their relationships with each other 
it was based on family and family network, family networks akin. And uh, so uh, that's that was a sort of a, a problematic uh, request to show that your tribe has been isolated for a, at least a hundred years without much contact with any other groups or being you know infiltrated by other native groups. And it's a it's a myth. Uh, so you can't work with that. How can you pre present real history when the, when the notion of the, the presumption there is, uh, is already biased? Uh, it's some sort of a colonial myth that uh, these folks were living in separate tribes, quote unquote. Uh, so anyway, we we spent uh, over a year doing research, trying to go to the archives, and I, I entered, I, I interviewed the. Uh, Folks uh, with the, what's called the Bray Boys School uh, over, over near Roland, but over near Dillon, South Carolina. And uh, in the end, we just came up with uh, some, a, a history and cultural history showing the institutions that were there for the tribe, the churches. And in this case, that's a, a two room, was a one room at start, but it ended up as a two room, one of the last. Uh, two-room schools in the United States by the 1970s. Uh, so we were able to document all of this, and in the in the in the end, we had a a framework, a meaning system, what the tribe was about, its beginnings, its family, its connections, the connections, uh, kin connections with within the tribe, uh, and how their history together as, as a tribal peoples. And uh, so once we finished that, and I had gone back to uh, Toronto to finish my uh, writing my dissertation a couple of years later, in 2006, actually, uh, the tribe was giving, given formal state recognition. So I'm, I'm proud that I played a small part in that, in their efforts, and I was very privileged to be able to work with them. Uh, during that that time I was there and uh, and helping them move forward. So that 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 was a symbolic interactionist study that was uh, carried out under the umbrella of public sociology. That's, that symbolic interactionism can actually be used. So the symbolic interactionist part of it was uh, the struggle over meanings that groups struggle over what things mean, and uh, so we had to struggle and negotiate between what the state saw as meaning a real, quote unquote, real uh, Native American tribe and what the real tribe history was, which is different from uh, the white man, if you want to use it that way, the white man's uh, interpretation of their history. Uh, so we had to negotiate, right? We couldn't just totally neglect the state's perspective. We had to negotiate through language meaning right and uh it was a good time politically also in the state for this to happen and uh it was not only this this one tribe that was recognized at, during that same uh period but uh, nine nine different tribes were uh, given state recognition and uh, so that that that's that's a good example of symbolic interaction is study and uh, i do have a lot more of uh of these Many more uh, studies that I've done from that, that perspective. I'll tell you about it some more uh, later. And uh, so, what I think what I'm going to do is, is uh, go ahead and, and, and put this a little talk since we're past 30 minutes now. I don't want to go any further. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you another, another one within the next day on the. Uh, social structure personality and give you a little bit more insight on that theory so let's let's go ahead and stop this for today and uh, i'll talk to you again soon you guys stay safe and uh, send me emails if you're having questions about your readings if there's a particular concept you're having trouble with we, we can also set up a time again as i said before uh, about uh, contacting me to set up a uh, we can set up a, a chat uh, appointment we can go through the our canvas page and and go to the chat there and uh, we can talk that way if it's uh, something that's really needing for us to unravel 
uh, I would make, a lot of times I prefer a phone call. So I would, what I would do at that point is ask you to send me your phone number and I'll call you. We can talk by phone about some issues, whether it's issues with your, your class or if it's issues with a concept. And, you know, we, we, we can do that as well. So anyway, um, you guys have a good day and uh, I'll talk to you uh, on the next one. All right. Bye-bye.